Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Echo Guide. Today we will be discussing about arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy or dysplasia in short known as ARVD or ARVC. As the name suggests, ARVD predominantly affects the right side of the heart. It is a rare familial disorder that may cause ventricular tachycardia and sudden cardiac death in young apparently healthy individuals. It is characterized by a thinned and dilated right ventricle from a progressive loss of myocytes which are replaced with fibrous and fatty tissue in the RV myocardium. This fatty tissue disrupts the electrical pathways and causes abnormal contractions like ventricular tachycardia and thus leading to abnormal ejection of blood. The clinical hallmark of the disease is ventricular arrhythmias arising predominantly from the right ventricle whereas the pathological hallmark of the disease is fibrofatty replacement of right ventricular myocardium. Cause of ARVD It is usually caused by mutations in genes that encode desmosomal proteins. These proteins are involved with cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. Since the mechanical bonds become weak and faulty over time and exertion, the process of pulling apart causes formation of scarring and fat replacement. Phases of ARVD There are four phases of ARVD. The first one is concealed phase, where the patient is usually asymptomatic, may have minor VT episodes and the RV is only seen with subtle changes. These patients are at a higher risk of sudden death. The second phase is the overt phase, where structural and functional changes are noted in the RV. Symptoms such as ventricular dysarrhythmias, presyncope, syncope and palpitations are seen. The third phase includes dilatation and weakening of the RV. Patient exhibits symptoms of RV failure including edema of lower extremities, abdominal distension, dyspepsia and anorexia. The last phase includes the left side of the heart. The LV dilates and weakens resulting in symptoms of left heart failure. Next is classification of ARVD. It is classified depending on which side of the heart is involved. The first one is dominant right one which is the classic ARVC. The second one is biventricular which involves both RV and LV. And the third one is dominant left that is arrhythmogenic left ventricular cardiomyopathy or ALVC. Depending upon the degree of severity of the disease, both RV and LV will get affected morphologically, structurally as well as functionally. Now let's move on to the diagnosis of ARVD. There is a specified criteria to confirm the diagnosis of ARVD. The diagnostic criteria includes the major and the minor criteria. The major criteria includes Severe RV dilatation, reduced RV EF, localized RV aneurysms, severe segmental RV dilatation, and regional RV akinesia or dyskinesia. The minor criteria includes mild global RV dilatation, mildly reduced RV EF, and regional RV hypokinesia. Later on in the revised criteria, RV end diastolic volume was also added as a parameter to increase the diagnostic value of the criteria. Let us now discuss about the echocardiographic findings of ARVD. Echocardiography is the primary diagnostic test which plays an important role in the initial diagnosis of ARVD. Following are the echo findings in case of ARVD. RARV enlargement, reduced RVEF, increased RVEDV, isolated dilatation of the RVOT, increased reflectivity of the moderator band, prominent apical trabeculations, localized aneurysms, decreased fractional area change, and akinesis or dyskinesis of the inferior wall and RV apex. Now, for your better understanding, let's have a look at the real echo images. As you can see here, right heart dilatation and reduced RV TDIS wave and TAPSA indicating reduced RV function. Prominent apical trabeculations, septal flattening due to RV dilatation, prominent moderator band and annular dilatation causing severe TR. 
Let us now discuss the other diagnostic findings of ARVD. So MRI can play an important role in the diagnosis of ARVD by showing abnormalities in the right ventricle such as RV free wall changes, fatty infiltration, thinning and akinesis of RV free wall are commonly noted. Angiographic findings in ARVD typically includes RV enlargement, localized areas of akinesia or dyskinesia, prominent trabecular structures with deep fissures and potential localized aneurysms or outpouchings, which indicates abnormal RV wall structure and function due to fibrofatty replacement of the myocardial tissue. However, this invasive procedure is rarely used for diagnosis due to its nature and the availability of non-invasive imaging techniques like cardiac MRI. Management of ARVD Medical management includes antiarrhythmic drugs and medications which prevent clot formation. Medications such as Sotalol, Amiodaron and Warfarin are given to the patient. Administration of Warfarin prevents emboli development secondary to high residual blood volume in RV. The second is catheter ablation, which may be used to stop the electrical impulses causing arrhythmias. Surgery may also be done to place an implantable cardiac defibrillator in the heart to prevent sudden cardiac death. Finally, a heart transplant may be done if arrhythmias do not respond to interventions or the heart failure isn't being controlled by the medications. And that is all for this video everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helps and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more such videos.